Hey, it's Jamie and Jeremy from Gildbrook Farm, and today we're kicking off our off-grid cooking series with the Swedish Fire Torch. Now today we have with us a friend, this is Clark. Uh, any of you guys that have watched our video where we're trying to put the wall back on our shed, this was the brains behind all of that. Uh, so he's gonna join us today in our first video uh, for Cooking Off Grid, where we are uh, going to try out three different ways of making a, C a Swedish fire torch. Those of you guys have, who have never heard of one before, I know we never heard of one before we started doing some research on them. Um, the Swedish fire torch goes by a couple different names. It goes by the Swedish fire torch, uh, the Finnish fire torch, the Canadian fire torch, the Canadian candle. Uh, apparently it was used uh, during the 30 year Canadian war. Um, soldiers used to cut these up and use them to cook on. Uh, it was also used, I believe in Finland or in uh, Sweden where as, as a signal for travelers, uh, they would burn one of these logs out in front of a house and that would indicate to travelers that that was okay to stop in at that place to spend the night. As soon as that candle went out, then no go, you're gonna have to find another place. So uh, we are going to try and assemble this in the three different ways that we researched, and we're gonna see which one works, if any of them work, and maybe we'll cook some dinner on it. The very first, first way is going to be uh, the traditional way where, where we are going to cut uh, vertical cuts into the log three quarters of the way down. We're gonna try to start a fire inside of there. The second way is more of a rocket stove where we are going to take a one and a half inch drill bit, drill it down through the top of the log and then drill one in horizontally to try and get some airflow like a chimney. And then the third way is where we are going to build one of these out of a bunch of different sticks vertically and uh, tie it together all with some metal to keep it held together. So we're gonna see what works. Yeah, now um, off-grid cooking, let's talk a little bit about that terminology when we think about off-grid cooking. Um, to me, off-grid cooking is just the ability to cook and prepare a meal um, without using electricity or natural gas or some utility that you have to make a monthly payment to. Um, so there, that would be off-grid cooking. And then uh, there is self-sufficient cooking where sort of off-grid cooking, if you have to use your barbecue grill or something like that, you have to keep replenishing propane and you have to go buy that at the store. So it's not necessarily self-sustainable. Um, so there would be off-grid cooking, then self-sustainable cooking, and then there would be something like this, which is not something you would probably set up to do on a regular basis if you are off-grid, because it's a lot of work and a lot of hassle. This I would consider camping. And so we're going to start here and then move on to some more refined methods of off-grid cooking. Let's get started. All right. So we got the log split about three quarters of the way down and now we need to figure out a way to spread this apart a little bit so there's more airflow going in there and Clark had a great idea. Find some rocks and we'll try to pound them down in there <laughs> or the other thing I thought is we could take the uh, go devil and drive the go devil down in there to spread it set the rocks and then pull the go devil back out that way you don't just disintegrate the rocks. Let's try it. Just drop one down in there. All right, so we have the Swedish candle log or the Swedish, Swedish fire torch. torch. Swedish fire torch <laughs> set up uh, pretty good and split open and ready to go. Now we're gonna turn this one into hopefully a rocket stove. And I'm just gonna drill a couple big holes, one down and one in. Have them meet in the middle and hopefully we'll make a combustion chamber inside this log.
right, now the third way that we're going to make a Swedish fire torch, it's just another version of the Swedish fire torch, is to take a bunch of logs that are uh, somewhat smaller in diameter and somewhat similarly similar in height and just kind of bundle these all together, wrap it with some wire. Uh, and uh, again, it's the same concept as the Swedish fire torch. You got air coming in from the side. It's going to burn basically from the inside out. So we have our three different versions of the Swedish fire torch. The one that we have over here is more of the rocket stove. We have a one and a half inch hole drilled down through the top and then one in the front and it meets in the center like an L shape. This one is uh, more of the traditional Swedish fire torch where we uh, created um, vertical lines and it is split three quarters of the way down and held open with rocks. And then this one over here is just a different version where we took uh, a bunch of smaller logs and put them all together, tie them together with some metal wire. Now, another option is to uh, cut this one completely down to the bottom and then bind it all together with some wire. So that would be another option if you wanted to try this version. All right, to get these uh, started, we are going to use um, Instafire on the rocket stove. The reason we're using Instafire is because this guy burns at about a thousand degrees. Uh, it burns on wet wood, it burns on snow. And it's just a, a non-toxic powder. It's actually uh, eco-friendly. Now we can pour down into this hole and uh, hopefully uh, get this fire started from the inside out. Now we can't use the Instafire in these two versions because it has to sit in a pile and these it would just scatter all over with these two versions. So for these two versions, we're gonna just use a homemade fire starter. It's just an egg carton with some dryer lint, uh, some um, sawdust in there, and then some wax. So we're just gonna tuck those down in uh, to get those started for these two. Now this whole packet um, actually is, is good up to four fires, so we're going to just pour about a quarter of the packet down in here and see if we can get it to light. All right, we got some fat wood here that we're going to light and stick it in this bottom hole and see if we can get it lit. All right, so we're gonna light the second one here. I have a piece of fat wood in here just to kind of give it continual burn. Bunch of twigs stuck down in there as well. Just gonna light this fire starter here. All right, now we're gonna light the third one. Again, I'm gonna put another piece of fat wood down in here just to kind of give it something to catch on to. And then I have my fire starter tucked down in here. And we'll see if we can get her lit. I think it's pine scented wax because it smells very piney. All right, we're gonna get dinner on. We're gonna put a couple rocks around here to uh, hold up our pot. And what I have in here is just some rice and some chicken broth. And we're gonna put that on to uh, heat that up. All right, so we have our rice on with some broth. We have our um, Swedish fire torch, which is having a little bit of trouble getting going. Clearly this one is on fire really well. So we're going to start roasting some brats and some vegetables to go along with our rice. Our, uh, our third pile fell over, as you can see. So I'm making the best of it. We're roasting it sideways. Getting our veggies. And then we gotta get our uh, rice and we should be good to go.
thing is just getting started too. It's nice and orange down in there. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it's just gonna get better. So what was the final results of our Swedish fire torch three different ways? Well, first of all, we had a very nice dinner. It was brats and some vegetables, and we had some rice, and then we had uh, some apple cobbler that was actually done in a sun oven, and we're gonna show you a video on that soon enough. So this here was our rocket stove, and this one caught fairly easily using the Instafire and it had a nice slow burn all night long. Uh, just to test it a little bit, we threw a couple sticks in and it would shoot fire out the top. But uh, barring that, it just had a nice slow burn where the top just slowly started getting bigger and bigger. You could have cooked on this thing all night long. Uh, this had a nice, kept a nice flat surface. So we were able to cook our rice on this. And this, this was great for any kind of uh, pot or pan um, cooking. This one here was our actual Swedish fire torch and we had quite a bit of trouble getting this thing started. It's possible that it had to do with the fact that it was too close to these other two fires. Maybe it wasn't um, drawing enough oxygen. It's possible that the gaps in between the wood weren't uh, spread far enough apart. And it's also possible that the wood was just too hard and there was nothing in there for the fire to get grab hold of. We were eventually able to get it started by taking some coals from this fire here and stuffing it down in and then it had a, it burned all night long. Again, it was a nice burn, but the surface of this particular log burnt really fast so it wasn't very practical for keeping a pot over it because it had such a wide hole. And this one over here was where we bundled the sticks together and uh, this caught fire really quickly and was really nice for roasting over. This is what we ended up roasting our vegetables over and uh, our brats over. Uh, but the problem was is this eventually fell over and just turned into like a little mini campfire that uh, throughout the night we just threw some extra logs on. Uh, I would say that this is a really good idea if you were going camping and uh, maybe you were in damp conditions and you brought this bundle of wood with you and you wanted to start the fire off of the ground uh, and get it going, this would be a way of doing that. But as far as roasting anything in a pan or a pot over this kind of fire, you wouldn't be able to do that until it fell over and you had some nice ashes on the ground. Um, overall, the most successful of all three was the rocket stove one. That's the one we were most impressed with. We would probably make this again um, and kind of just experiment a little bit more with this one. This one was actually really fun and it was the most practical when it came to off-grid cooking. If you guys like off-grid cooking and you guys want to learn how to cook off-grid with us, feel free to follow along. We're going to be doing a lot more videos on off-grid cooking in the next couple of weeks and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks for watching.